In this problem, we are told that an IV of 1,000 milliliters of D5W was ordered to infuse over 8 hours at 42 drops per minute. We also know the drop factor was 20 drops per milliliter. We come back 4 hours later and we notice that only 400 milliliters has actually infused. What we need to do is to recalculate the rate in drops per minute so that the IV can finish on time. Not only that, we want to look at the percent change and we want to determine whether or not we should consult with a doctor. So just some basic overview before we actually get into the calculation. The reason we need to be able to recalculate and the reason that something happened here is that with these gravity sets, with this IV that drops per minute, sometimes a patient can move or something can happen where the IV is actually not infusing exactly as we had set it to. So that's why we would need to come back and check because a patient might move, something might block the, the gravity from actually pushing the medication into the, the patient. So that's why it's necessary. We need to make sure that if we make a calculation in order to finish on time, we need to look at the percent change. And if it is greater than 25%, then we need to contact the prescriber. So if we determine that, you know what, they were only receiving one drop per minute, but now I need to change it so they receive 100 drops per minute. That is a significant difference. Okay? That's a very large percent change. We need to look at those, to compare the recalculation to the order. And if it's larger than 25%, we would contact the doctor or the prescriber. Now, how we're going to solve these problems is we're always going to keep in mind the order and the remaining. What remains when we come back to check? So. The most confusing part for students is that with these problems, they have no idea where to start and how to organize this information. So I provide these charts as a learning tool, but then on your quizzes and exams, you may not have this. I mean, I'm not going to provide you a chart like this. It will be up to you, if you find these helpful, to create them yourself. So in the order, the volume was 1,000 milliliters. We needed 1,000 milliliters to infuse and the infusion time was in eight hours. Now it turns out in this example the rate that we want the patient to have the medication or the in this case D5W is given to us. It's given to us as 42 drops per minute. They may not provide you this information but it turns out we already know that the order was for the patient to receive the D5W at 42 drops per minute. The drop factor, as we saw in the previous calculations, that's always going to be necessary. That's not going to fall into in individual pieces here, but we do want to write that, that the drop factor, we know the tubing will convert every milliliter into 20 drops. That's the size of the tubing. Now think about what remains, and this is where we have to kind of read into the problem. After four hours, we notice only 400 has infused. This number 400, that's not how much remains. We had 1,000 to start with. 400 has infused. So if we look at the difference, that means there are 600 milliliters left to infuse. Right? We're always looking about what remains. Sometimes the problem words it differently. Every problem is going to be different. You need to, to problem solve and think about what remains. We're also looking at after four hours. So the infusion time originally was eight hours. We're coming back four hours later, which means there's four hours remaining. Always thinking about what remains. Now for the rate, that's not going to be given to you. This is the main piece of information that we're calculating. Right? We're recalculating the rate in order to finish on time. We need 600 milliliters to infuse over four hours. So if we were to approach this with a dimensional analysis approach, 600 milliliters needs to infuse over four hours. Right? That's that volume over time ratio. That's what we need. Notice we don't have drops per minute, which is what we need. In order to compare it to the order, we need to convert it to drops per minute. Well, I know I can convert milliliters into drops. That's given to me by the drop factor. 
I know that every milliliter is going to be 20 drops. And I know every hour, if I want to convert hour into minute, every hour is 60 minutes. So if you were to, let's plug this in our calculator here, 600 times 20, and we're going to divide that by 240, we get 50. And that's exactly 50. We don't have to round anything. That's exactly 50, and the unit is drops per minute. Now quickly, if I were to use the formula, right, the flow rate is equal to the volume times the drop factor divided by the time in minutes. The volume to infuse in this case is 600. The drop factor is 20. And the time is, there's four hours, so there's four hours, but we need that in minutes, so we'll multiply it by 60. Notice we get the same answer as we should. We get 50 drops per minute. You can also notice that the formula will provide us with the same, the same operation here, multiplying 600 by 20 and dividing it by 4 times 60, as the dimensional analysis did. So we just answered the first question by recalculating the rate that it needs to finish on time. We did that by considering what remained. 600 milliliters remained, 4 hours remained. We used those pieces of information in our formula or dimensional analysis. And in order for this particular order to finish on time, we would have to change the, to the IV so that 50 drops are going in every minute. Now the second half here is what is the percent change and should we consult a doctor or whoever prescribed this. The percent change formula is going to be given to us by that new amount, whatever our new recalculation is, we're going to subtract the old or the original amount, divide that by the old, and multiply it times 100. Now this was something we saw earlier in the year. If I were to plug these numbers in, the new amount is 50. That is our new rate. Our original, or order, you can also think of that O as the order, was 42. Right? Divide that by the original amount as 42. And what if, just by doing this, if you take 50 minus 42, what you get is 8. So that's the change. We increased by 8. And 8 divided by 42 times 100, this is going to give us, and let's, let's write the exact answer. So 8 divided by 42 times 100 is going to give us, write down exactly what you see, 19.04767. Six one dot dot dot. So that's going to continue, and now we can round that to approximately, let's say, nineteen percent. So this is telling us that if we were to change the forty-two drops per minute that the patient was receiving, and change it to fifty, that's a percent increase of nineteen percent. I know it's an increase because this is a positive number here. Nineteen is positive. If you were to get a negative number, that's okay. Don't get scared or nervous if it's a negative number. That's just telling you you're decreasing the rate. We're not concerned with the value in terms of positive or negative. We're looking at the absolute value. In this case, a 19% change. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, it is okay because it is less than 25%. So on a quiz or on an exam, if I asked you, should you cons consult a doctor or whoever prescribed it, if you just say no or yes, that's not going to be exactly correct. You need to be very clear that in this case, do you need to cons consult a doctor? The answer is no, because it is less than 25%. So no, we do not need to consult with whoever prescribed this because the percent change is less than 19%. Let's look at one more example. We have another rate recalculation problem where we are told an IV of 1,000 milliliters is to infuse in 10 hours. We know the drop factor is 15, so there's 15 drops for every milliliter. That's the size of the tubing. We were told that the bag was hung at 0,400, and we're coming back at 1,000, and we see that 600 milliliters remain. 
what we need to do is to find in the drops per minute rate so that the order will finish on time. We need to, well actually no, the first thing we need to do is to find the ordered rate for the IV, then recalculate that rate to see if we can finish on time, and then what's the percent change. So let's start trying to fill in what we know. The order, for the order, the volume that was ordered to be infused was 1,000 milliliters. That's good. And that was ordered to infuse over 10 hours. Now in the previous problem in this video, the rate was given to you. You were told that the patient was to receive at you know, 42 drops per minute. In this case, since I'm asking you to find the ordered rate, we don't know that. The only thing I know is that the volume is 1,000, the time is 10 hours, the infusion time, and I know the drop factor is 15. So we need to first find the rate. One way that you can do that is to use dimensional analysis or you can use the formula. So I know, and since I used dimensional analysis in the last one, maybe I'll use the formula in this example. 1,000 milliliters needs to infuse. The drop factor is 15, so there's 15 drops per milliliter. And the time, the infusion time, is 10 hours. So 10, but we don't want that in hours, we need that in minutes. So 10 hours, you multiply that by 60. So we get 1,000 times 15, so 1,000 times 15, and then we're going to divide that by that 10 times 60. And what you get is a nice number of 25. So our rate to starting with is 25 drops per minute. What is ordered to re be received here by the patient is 25 drops per minute. Now keep in mind this is an extra step in this problem, in the last problem that was given to us, that the orders, the order, the infusion order was, was given. So be careful. Now we have to come back and think about what remains. Because it says the bag was hung at 0400, we're going to come back at 1000 and see that 600 remains. So in the last problem we had to do a little bit of subtraction. In this problem we may or may not have to. Thinking about what remains, it says when we come back to check that 600 milliliters remains. So we're actually told exactly how many milliliters remains. In the last one we had to subtract, in this one we don't because 600 remains. How much time remains? Well, it was hung at 0400. I come back at 1000. So I know that six hours have passed, right? Between 0400 and 1000, six hours have passed, which means that's passed. Sorry, it's not pegged or whatever that looks like, pegged. Six hours have passed, which means 10 minus 6 means four hours remain. So 600 milliliters needs to infuse over four hours. We can find that flow rate. All right, by, let's use the formula again. 600 milliliters is going to be infused. The drop factor is 15. So 600 times 15 times, or excuse me, uh, four times 60 in the denominator because that's our, our rate, I mean, excuse me, our formula. Remember, we had the volume times the drop factor divided by the time in minutes. So if we were to put that in our calculator, 600 times 15, and we divide that by that 240, that, <coughs> excuse me, um, 4 times 60, which is 240, we get exactly 37.5, which when we round that to the nearest whole number, we get 38. 38 drops per minute. So just as we saw in the previous problem, we had to be careful about how we were figuring out what remains. 600 remains because we're told that. And with the time, that was a little bit more complicated in that we had to think about how much time passed and how much remained. So we answered one. We figured out the order and how much needed to, to be infused to start with. We just recalculated to determine how much needed to finish on time. Now we need to look at the percent change. And the percent change is going to be that formula of new minus old over old times 100. 
So what is the change relative to our original order? And then multiply that times 100. So we had 38. That's our new rate. We are going to have to adjust the 38. Our original rate was 25. Divide that by 25 to think about you know, the relative change. And what we get, oh, forgot my times 100. This will be 13 divided by 25 times 100. And when you put that into the calculator, which you may or may not need to do, you get 52. Right? 13 divided by 25 times 100, you get 50, 52. So we have a change of 52%. 52%. That means if we follow through with the adjustment, we would be changing the order by 52%. Should we consult with a doctor or whoever prescribed this? The answer is yes. And in order to get full credit on a quiz or an exam, what you would say is yes. We should consult with the doctor or the prescriber because the percent change is larger than 25%. Again. Yes, we would consult with the prescriber or the doctor because the percent change is larger than 25%. Now before um, I end this, I just want to mention, once again, if you get a negative number, all that's saying is that this is a decrease. So you can ignore the positive or negative number when you're looking at the percent change. What that's telling you is, are you increasing the rate or are you decreasing? The other thing that we want to keep in mind, as I've mentioned, is these problems contain a lot of information. And students try to, the best that they can, just jump right into the calculations. Although I'm sure you can do that if you work hard at it, that you can get the answer that way. It is going to be much more likely that you get the correct answer and you avoid stress if you have a way to organize your information and think about what information is essential. This chart is going to help you organize that information. This chart will not be on your quizzes and your exams. It will be up to you to create this to help you.